Hi, Trisha here from East Marsh Acres. Um, yeah, I'm going to get the chickens. Actually, I've just been to the chickens, but I'm going to give them some scrap shit to chew on. Uh, these are chicken scraps. This is, well, there'll be some chicken scraps in there too as well for, uh, from when we were camping. And uh, yeah, the chickens are pretty healthy. Although we only have, we only have 10 now. Um, before we left on our trip, I was nursing a chicken because it had a prolapse um, vent, basically. And uh, I nursed it for about two, two weeks and uh, just shocked myself. <laughs> I forgot to turn it off. Um, oh yeah, you guys know the bowl. So this is my scrap bowl and they know the bowl. Getting scraps. So, <laughs> and they go crazy for it. They grab something and take off and... See the one underneath the coop? Grab something and ran. Right away underneath there. Yeah, or they steal it from others. Looks like they're liking my zucchini bread. It was just on its way out. So, um, Starting to mold? Yeah. So they, as you see, we, um, we're, we we have them in an enclosure with this electric net. We have a uh, big water, so we clean that out every day, dump it, and the water continually refreshes. There's about 70 liters in there, so it lasts for, for almost a, a week. And uh, yeah, we have a, a chicken shaw. So that's the coop at night. And uh, inside, here. They have their nest boxes. Have them turned around now um, because then they don't lay in them at night. And poop in so them. The eggs. Ten chickens, we got nine eggs today. And uh, we have an average about eight most days. So if you come around here, you can see. Um, Give them an awning. So we've made them an awning on their chicken shaw. So now this can um, this can roll. Obviously, it's on wheels, and it's got its uh, opening there uh, where we. So at night, that's where they go in. They, they shut themselves, well they don't shut themselves in, but they go in there and then we shut it. Um, we're looking into possibly getting a electric door come the fall. Um, yeah, and then I have a feeding tube Whoops. here, and that's where the green is for the day. We've pretty well gone through that. Um, Some days with warmer weather, they don't, they eat, don't as eat as much. Yeah. But then I haven't given them mash for a few days yet, so tomorrow they'll get a special treat. They have some some uh, scratch that I've softened up and put in water, so it it expands. Then they don't eat as much of that. Um, but I found oh, there she is. But I found eating too much of the scratch. They weren't eating as much of the layer feed. So then their laying went down too. So I don't think they were getting the protein that they needed or I don't know, whatever. So I'm cutting back on the amount of days that I give the, the scratch to them. And uh, but this, I mean, this patch, they've only been here for just a little over a week. And they totally decimated all. And it looked like what is over there. So that's where they're going to go to. Well, I think I'll bring them over here. Well, there's a, I think there's a perfect spot there, like, yeah, like going along that, that section of the, so you go one over this way, 
and then two, and then two. Well, this is a three, right? So three, yeah, and I know. then but one, use the third one. two. I, mm -hmm. I don't have a, a second. Okay, we'll try it. I mean, then that, that patch is done, and then we can move over that way and come back this way. So anyways, we moved them around, and they're, they're basically doing a good job of kind of weed, weed eating the, the things. And then this is what we have for overhead hawk protection. So we've got old CDs, and they catch the sunlight and uh, um, blink and whatever, so they kind of throw the hawks off. They can't really see through all this. And if they wanted to swoop down to land, it would be hard for them to actually grab a uh, chicken with these ropes up. So, so far it's been working since the spring. So um, the first day that I didn't have it up, that's when a hawk came right away and uh, got it up the next day and they've been fine since so i'm pretty pleased with it i'll just show you where the chickens have been and you can see the kind of effect that they have so prior to them moving to here we actually had them in here and you can see that there's a few of the um, the thorny bushes that uh, are here and some of the longer grasses because they don't touch those but you'll see that uh, a lot of green grass is starting to now show up because they actually end up fertilizing the soil yeah so rather than the kind of yucky weeds there's more kind of grassy things happening because um, over here we've got another spot where they were and uh number of spots yeah down here so especially this spot this is now more grass than anything like and then this spot here so really like that spot here was like this as well and then there's a couple spots there that they were so it just kind of Breaks down the well, they were here first, right? And uh, yeah. we allowed the weeds to come back. And then we moved them over here. You can see basically where the outline is, where they've been, right? So it's where the goldenrod starts again. So there's the goldenrod there. And right along this area. So we get to about here, and then we went in this direction, and this direction. So there were two paddocks. Oh, look at this. Squash way over here. One little, one uh, fruit on it. Anyways, this was a couple of paddocks uh, for a number of weeks that uh, we had them in here. Look at our beautiful sunflowers. Lots of sunflowers. Yeah. So I hope to, again it goes with the chickens, I hope to harvest some of the seeds before the birds do for the chickens. If the birds get them that's fine too, but I mean I'd like I like them to be for our birds. So there's one falling apart there. I don't know. I gotta look up how, how you do this when you pick them when you I think it's too Junie, early. come this way. Junie! Junie, Junie come here. Way. Come Junie, here. Junie, come on. <coughs> Junie? Junie. <coughs> come. Uh, so I'll just give you a peek. Probably bring you along the next time I go to uh, harvest tomatoes and cucumbers. But you'll see that it's quite the jungle in here as well. So cucumbers are in the middle. 
and then we've got tomatoes. Oh, there are quite a number of tomatoes that are coming along. And I haven't looked at the peppers at all. They are starting to grow as well. Oh, we've got some nice, nice ones in here. There's a really large pepper right there. Oh, and then there's another one. Number of peppers on these plants. And tomatoes, cucumbers. At the end, we've got wonderberries. And here we've got tomatoes again. These uh, tomatoes are not as fully developed, but they're coming. Oh, definitely coming. Okay, so uh, we're going to have to get in there. Trish, the pointy ones. Oh, these are definitely ready. Anyway, so I need to map out where I'm going with the chickens next. And then I'll have to do some weed whacking to get there. Okay, the first step in uh, putting together a new paddock for the chickens basically entails um, laying out the way that is actually going to be uh, uh, situated. So I've got a length of rope and they all have, it's all broken up into 12 foot sections, um, which is the length of the, uh, the fence that we have. And uh, at each intersection of uh, 12 feet, um, I put a, um, a, a, uh, a knot and in the knot I'll put one of these stakes and then lay out essentially the entire seven sections of our 50, 50 foot fence, a little bit more than that, um, and uh, see how I could situate it. And once I've got that laid out, I can determine where I actually have to uh, cut the weeds and the grass so that I end up with uh, a, a, essentially a, a flat section that's not going to ground out uh, the electrical fence itself. Um, so that's what I'll do and when I'm finished I will show you what I've got and then I'll start to uh, cut it out uh, using the, um, the trimmer. So this is the way that I've got it laid out. So we'll put the gate here and then essentially it'll run alongside the existing fencing. And right at the corner, we'll head off in this direction, 12 feet, so it's a single section. And then we'll go 24 feet across to this corner. And then we'll take that right back to the gate, which is, again, another 24 foot section. So we've got three, three, um, three edges of the section that essentially are 24 feet, so two sections of the uh, fence, and there's a single there, and then there's two sections there, and two sections coming back here. So I'll clear out all of the space where you see the yellow uh, rope at this point in time, yellow non-on rope. And I'll do that using a brush cutter that we purchased a few weeks back. So this brush cutter it has a uh, four-stroke engine and uh, it cuts through most of the, uh, the brush with no problems. Um, I'll show you what I'm doing as I'm going about it, uh, but I'll, I can't do both the cutting and uh, the video recording at the same time. So I'll see what I can do to uh, set this up so you can see what I'm doing as I'm doing it but there are going to be restrictions.
as you can see, I've cleared around the entire area where the fence is going to be tomorrow morning. So we have another, I don't know what the uh, square footage would be, but another paddock for the uh, chickens to reside in for another week or so, and then we'll move them over in that direction. But uh, that's basically all that we need to do. In the morning, we'll take you along in the morning so you see what we're actually doing. But six o'clock in the morning, we'll uh, pull down all the fencing and uh, move the, the the chicken shaw with the chickens in it, uh, so that we don't have to go chasing each individual chicken or anything along those lines. Some interesting behaviors on the part of the chickens. Anyways, uh, so we'll move the chicken shaw and then we'll build the fence around where the chicken shaw is going to be. And so they'll end up flattening within a day or so uh, this uh, amount of material that you're seeing here. So that's basically what we do for moving the chickens uh, from one section to the next. And uh, we're re renewing essentially the uh, the land as we're going. Because uh, this is, again, for those of you who haven't uh, um, listened to or watched our, our videos before, this uh, land that we're sitting on, so everything to the, uh, the south side or the road side of those bushes, which is uh, hiding a swale uh, that drains the land uh, that's higher than us off to the, the east um, and to the south, the southeast. So that's east and south is that direction. Anyways, it dr drains all of that land into a creek that runs from the, uh, the end of the swale. Actually, the creek starts a lot higher than, than uh, our land does. And uh, the creek runs all the way alongside the edge of our property. Some of it's on our property. And it runs into the marsh that's uh, sitting on the other side of the road. Uh, the nice thing about the marsh is that it will never be developed because it's protected and the creek is protected as well. So we had to stay away 30 meters from the creek and from the marsh before we could actually build anything. That's why the house is so far back in the back uh, of our property at this point. But uh, um, we are, are developing this land because it's all fill, right? So everything that you see in this uh, front area where we've got our gardens etc has all been filled in with uh, soil that's trucked in from someplace else and it's got lots of stones and brick and all kinds of things in it um, and so it's actually good for building or uh, growing scrub and uh, a lot of these wildflowers goldenrod queen anne's lace uh, a variety of other things but for gardening it's not all that great and so we need to amend the soil uh, in as many ways as possible and we do that partially with chickens and in the um, in the gardens themselves we amend it using a combination of uh, compost and topsoil that we're building into the rows and so we're three years in right now and so we have about nine to twelve inches of um, good soil that's sitting on top of all of that stone and rock uh, and you can see there's I don't know how much you can actually see but there's a mound uh, where you see each one of our five rows so one two three four and then five there's next year's compost so that's all um, cricket uh, manure and then we've got another five rows in the uh, uh, the back garden there and then there's another three rows 25 feet so each one of these is 50 feet and those is 50 feet and the hoop house is 25 feet and we've only got three rows of uh, amended soil there anyways I'm going to do a little bit more trimming so I can get rid of the uh, um, the shrub uh, material that is left behind after the chickens are done with it 
and I think I'll do a little bit of that over there as well. And then I'll bring you into the house and show you what uh, Patricia is doing to preserve the blueberries that we picked yesterday. Anyways, uh, we'll talk to pick this up again in, in just a little while.